Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through my predictions for the IGCSE 0607 Paper 4. And yes, you are looking correctly. I've got my Lederhosen on today since uh, this time of year it's usually around Oktoberfest. So I thought you'd like to see me in the Lederhosen and uh, let's get started with the video. So today I'm going to talk about the two categories. So not three categories this time, but two categories that I've divided the topics into. And if you know these 10, 11, 12 topics I'm going to mention today, you'll be well on the way to succeeding in your IGCSE paper four. I'm going to start with my often topics, and these are ones that you can really revise for very, very clearly, and sometimes they do appear on paper two. So if they've appeared on paper two, they're less likely to appear on paper four. Scatter graphs and regression lines. Now your GDC, your graphical display calculator, can work out the regression line for you. You can see just this topic alone appears eight in 13 papers. Uh, this is often the case when you have one GDC question and then the regression question comes along with it as well. So make sure you know how to plot some points on the scatter graph, find a regression line and interpret it. You'll notice the three topics I've mentioned here, so coordinate geometry, circle theorems, and sequences, usually appear in other parts of the examination procedure. So coordinate geometry is a big favorite on paper two, but does occasionally appear on the paper four as well. Circle theorems, for the time being, in the last 13 papers, have fell slightly out of fashion, but just be aware that it still appears five in 13 papers, so that's almost 50% of the time. And sequences does appear. If it does appear, it's usually a linear, quadratic, cubic, and the cubic is usually a combination of some of the others. That can happen. Or it can be a completely different sequence with a mixture of cubic, quadratic, and linear. So make sure you revise that anyway, because this often appears on paper six investigations. And although it is difficult to prepare for paper six, you can make a good guess that sequences will come up in some shape or form. And the bit you've been waiting for, I'm sure, is the almost certain category. So the first thing, as always, so I've said this in all my prediction videos, four paper fours on the 0607 paper, is those GDC questions. There is at least one question that requires the GDC, type in your function to the calculator, find the zeros or the roots and the intersection points. These are all functions you need to know how your calculator operates. Now I recommend the TI Inspire. Uh, the Casio CG50 is also very good as well, and this will help you find all those uh, different points. And this question will be out of 10, 12 marks. So this is a nice question to get 10% of your total grade on paper four. Next comes in statistics. You can see there's over more than one question per paper. Uh, notice there's no histograms anymore. So when I've been looking through the papers in 2019, we had histograms on there. That is not the case anymore. So cumulative frequency is now more likely to appear. So it makes it even more incentive to revise cumulative frequency, know how to plot the graph, know how to interpret it. You can also use your graphical display calculator to work out averages and the interquartile range. That will save you a lot of time when you're in the exam. Next comes in percentage calculations. This always used to be a favorite at the start of the paper. I've noticed the current trend is to put it in the middle of the paper. So it makes it very slightly more difficult than questions before. Uh, make sure you can work backwards through a compound interest problem, whether you do that by logs, whether you do that by trial and error, that's an important topic to cover, because again, this is a good chunk of marks. Equation solving comes in next. Now this can cover um, a variety of different topics. Uh, solving your linear and simultaneous equations is always important, just like on paper two. One of their favorite kind of questions is a geometric problem. So you work out the area of a shape with x minus two, x minus three is part of the dimensions, and then using that to actually solve a quadratic. So this kind of question that leads into a quadratic. Sometimes they also use speed, distance, time in exactly the same way. Uh, probability comes in next. Uh, generally, you're either gonna see a tree diagram or you're gonna see a Venn diagram when working out probabilities. So Venn diagram questions are kind of embedded within probability. Make sure you've, um, you've covered conditional probabilities when the probability changes from one event to another. That's important too. And one of the topics that I really get my students to focus on because the questions are pretty standard, they don't really change too much, are the sine cosine rule questions with bearings linked in. And it is worth lots of past paper practice. There are tons of questions on the last four or five years of past papers 
and they don't really vary in terms of style, unlike, say, the equation solving questions. So by practicing those, you get to see a lot of the patterns that you need to see. So when do you use the different rules? Can we use angles and parallel lines to work out particular angles to help us work out a different side? So do think through this topic very, very carefully. Make sure you're well, well prepared for it. Notice I just said two wells there. Never mind. There are also other topics in the almost certain category. It's interesting. I boiled down essentially um, this to nine topics. If you know these nine topics, that will kind of cover 70-80% of the exam. And if you review my predictions from last year, you'll see that was the case as well. Functions, this is a big topic and it can be a very big question as well when it appears. And this is something that students often struggle with. So if you're looking for the higher grades, this is a way of getting what we like to call in economics a comparative advantage compared to other students around the world. You need to work with composite functions, inverse functions, and then use those to solve equations. So they might say, for example, make the inverse equal to f of g of x and then solve the resulting quadratic. That is quite a common idea. Volume surface area of 3D shapes, so make sure you use your formula sheet for this. This is also linked into similarity, so working with similar shapes, similar lengths, similar areas, similar volumes, to make sure you can combine that with your volume knowledge and surface area knowledge. Again, that kind of question comes up a ton as well. And not to forget, because this often gets neglected, because you often do this in year 8 and year 9, 7th and 8th grade, is transformations. So first of all, you need to know how to, with without tracing paper, rotation, reflection, translation, enlargement. So know how to do that on a particular shape. Um, stretch didn't come up in the 2021 papers, but it has been on the papers before, so you can't neglect it. The more important skill, however, is to actually describe a transformation. So if I'm to trying to describe a rotation, I need to state, well, what angle it is, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, whether I'm going clockwise or anti-clockwise, and then the, the very important part, the center of rotation, which can often be tricky for students. If any of this is alien to you, then please do make sure you revise this, particularly if you're watching the video when it's coming out, you've only got three, four days until you actually have the exams themselves. Okay, so those are my predictions for IGCC 0607 for the exam series in October, November. As often with the maths exams, they do come very, very early. So not too much time to revise from what you did last year, but make sure you've gone over the topics that I've mentioned. So GDC questions, stats, percentage calculations, equation solving, probability, sine, cosine rule, functions, volume, surface area, 3D shapes, and transformations. That will set you on the way to getting a good grade on this paper. If you like the content, give me a like. It kind of helps. And uh, if you want to subscribe as well, that was also very, very helpful as well. All right. Bye-bye for now.